It's day 10 of the tour, and the race today starts in a most unlikely spot, an equestrian arena in the town of Somur, for this all-important race. Today's individual time trial is the first real test of this year's race. For a rider to even dream of winning the Tour de France, he has to do well here. Now, for the pure climbers, well, they'll be trying not to lose time before getting to their specialty next week in the Pyrenees and the Alps. For the other riders, they'll be trying to put distance between themselves and those who excel in the mountains. But one thing is abundantly clear here today. The standings will change, and the favorites for this year's Tour de France will step forward. One of those stars expected to emerge is Sean Kelly, the number one rider in the world. But he's not fully recovered from a recent illness. Andy Hampston is still being talked about as a possible tour winner, but he's never been on a 55-mile time trial before. The normally affable Stephen Roach knows today is serious business, but the importance of the time trial has even him edgy. I'll have to wait to see you. Good. 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 I get to the last 20 kilometers and I have nothing, like a lot of people will be today, it'll be all over. So I'll try to avoid a disaster and do a real good time. The first of today's favorites, Sean Kelly, is in the start house and ready to go. And Kelly, like everyone else who are pretenders to the title, now face the most important day so far. This is the longest time trial since 1951. The next 55 miles for Andy Hampston will be the most crucial of his career. Kelly is the first to leave among the fancied riders. While in the start house, Hampston fills up with air. He'll need plenty today. Each rider starts after an interval between of two minutes. The last man overall goes first, and the leader of the race goes last. And behind Andy Hampson, Stephen Roach awaits the signal. Sean Kelly fights to find his rhythm. He already appears to be struggling. While Hampson, carrying all the American hopes for victory, quickly settles on his aerodynamic bike. These early miles tell a rider straight away how his body will react to the steady punishment of the race against the clock. But Stephen Roach is a time trial specialist. He is out to impress. This is his big chance. Kelly, his eyes fixed on the road ahead, concentrates hard, trying to shut out the pain of effort as he passes a slower rider who started two minutes in front. In the start house is Charlie Motte, Francis Hope, now Bernard Eno has retired. Hampston is really a climber, but he can only hope here to limit his losses to men like Roach. Roach hopes to play his first trump card, but the time trial demands so much from a confused body, and Roach is hoping today it will come right. He moves past the teammate, showing why he's the chosen leader of the team. Holding a constant speed of 28 miles per hour is the ability of only a few. One of those is Roach. Charlie Motte is also underway now. He too, like Roach, relishes the time trial. And two years ago, he won France's biggest, the Grand Prix de Nation. Kelly continues up ahead, still searching for comfort. He is not riding well on a hilly course that should have suited him. And Motte, racing through a corridor of noise, knows the cheers are all for him. Allowing his own lonely furrow, Hampson is losing four minutes to Roach, and that's not good. While for Kelly, it can't be over too soon. Hampson continues with the anxious glance at his watch, showing his concern. Roach is the giant of the time trial, and the time check showing to be ahead at all checkpoints. The longest time trial ever for Andy Hampson is almost over and every second counts as he fights for the line. His time of 2 hours, 4 minutes and 31 seconds is not a great time for a top contender. Hampston's dug himself a hole he's going to literally have to climb out of in the mountains next week.
but for the Irishman Stephen Roach this was the moment of truth for him and he hadn't told any lies he'd excelled to his limits his excellent time of one hour and 58 minutes and 11 seconds was the fastest time of the day but at what cost to the Irishman? This had been the biggest effort ever for Stephen Roach in a time trial. With this time, Roach had climbed out of the anonymity of the field and up towards the leaders. But it had left its scars, and not just on Stephen Roach. The heat is getting worse and the race is getting harder, but today's been the hardest so far. Robert Miller, he performed far above his hopes, now he waits for the mountains. But there are others who may never see them. for a long time and what of Eric Mackler he's worn the jersey for a week now it's gone and Raul Alcala forced to show that courage again after a serious crash that cut his eye and broke his finger. Only Charlie Motte had challenged Roach's time midway and with a desperate sprint to the line the Frenchman finished just 42 seconds slower. He's no longer a dark horse for final honours but a real favourite now. Motte started the day a minute 36 seconds behind the yellow jersey of Eric Mackler. The Swiss finally succumbed to the race of truth and after six days in yellow Charlie Motte became the new man in the hot seat. So after stage 10, Motte is now the leader and Roach is making his bid. Hampston still has a lot of work to do. I'm pretty concerned um, just because it's... If I'm climbing really well, I'll be able to make up for it, but I don't like losing time in the first place, so it's not a good situation. That does it for today's adventure. If you're new here, please subscribe. Take it one step further and ring that notification bell. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big old like and a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. Right on.